Hi, this is to teach you a little bit about how we figure out the absolute age of rocks or the exact age of a rock. Um, before we really deal with absolute age of rocks, you have to understand a concept called radioactive decay. Um, now right up here, this atom is an unstable atom, and most atoms are stable, some aren't. Uh, ones that aren't want to change into another atom by releasing particles and energy. So this, this atom ends off sending off particles, it releases some energy, and this is all called radiation. Uh, there's different types of particles, different types of radiation, and it can have negative effects towards you, but if this atom gives off enough particles and radiation, eventually it changes into a more stable atom. And this happens at a consistent rate depending on the type of atom. So one type of um, radioactive atom that we use is uh, potassium, or sometimes it's labeled as K, and that's potassium-40. And it wants to change into argon-40. And argon's a gas which is much more stable than potassium-40. Now this is not the same potassium that you find in foods, other products, and in your body, just like uh, bananas. This is a radioactive isotope that is a very small amount of the potassium in the world. So let's take a look at how this affects um, rocks and such. What we've got here is a volcano, and as you know, volcanoes um, shoot out lava, and that lava flows down, and you end up with a whole bunch of molten stuff. Now also underneath the volcano is this big magma pool. And if you remember from science class, magma is molten rock before it's uh, exited the earth, well it's still inside the earth, and once it exits the earth and it's flowing out, it's not as much under as much pressure, then you have lava. Either of these can cool and form igneous rock. Now let's say this lava has some potassium 40 in it. So let's just let's zoom in here and what we've got are a bunch of little atoms. Let's say some of these are potassium 40. Uh, we'll change our pen color here. Hang on just a second. And let's say these are argon. And this is in the atom. Or I'm sorry, this is in the lava. Now while the lava is still molten, the argon, which is a gas, can just go up into the atmosphere. And argon is an inert gas, it's not very reactive, and it's floating around. So what happens is, as soon as this rock cools, so this is, this is while the lava is still hot, um, once, it, once it cools, what you end up with is just potassium-40 atoms in there. So what's happened is the argon-40 atoms evaporated out of the liquid lava or liquid magma and the potassium-40 ones stayed in there. Okay, now what's going to happen over time is slowly, 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 as time passes. So here's time, and as time passes, some of those unstable atoms are going to turn into more stable atoms. Remember, they release some energy and particles known as radiation. And over time, you're going to get just a little bit of argon in there. And the way scientists use this is they go over to the rock, they basically crack it in half, cut it open, and then they measure how much argon there is and how much uh, potassium. So basically they'll, they'll take a look at, let me bring this over here, they'll make a little graph and over here is the potassium or the percent, up here is 100% uh, 
and here is 0%. And then down here is time. So we measure how long it takes for potassium to turn into argon, and it turns out that for about 50%, so to get down to 50, this takes uh, 1.25 billion years. And sometimes this is rounded up to 1.3. Uh, that takes about 1.5 billion years, and this is called a half-life. Um, it's going to take another 1.25 billion years or another half-life for half of that to get disappear. So you see how this was half and now we're at half and then for another half to disappear it'll take another 1.25 billion until way, 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 way out here on the graph eventually this gets reduced by half and half and half and half and half until we have only argon. So we crack open the rock we take a look at, okay, how much potassium is there, how much argon, and we know the rate at which it decays. This is also called exponential decay for math class, but what we can then do is say, okay, well, there's this, there's this much in there. You draw the line over, find that point, draw it down, and you can say the rock is this old. It's, you know, 1.78 billion years old or however much. But that's the simplest version. So what we're doing again, once again, we've got these radioactive atoms. Uh, they want to change into a more stable atom. While the rock is liquid, that stable atom of argon, the gas, can escape. As soon as it cools, it's frozen in place in the rock. Over time, that potassium that's frozen in the rock is going to change into argon. And since it's in the rock, it can't escape in gas form. So scientists can come along, crack the rock open, and then they can measure, well, how much potassium is left, how much has changed into argon, plot it on the graph, and figure out how old it is.